In today's tutorial, we'll be sculpting the handpiece over here. So let's get started. Okay, first you want to go into object mode, just select the handpiece there. We're going to push the numpad period key so that it is uh, center view. And then I'm going to select shading to smooth. So I have to go into edit mode, push A to select all, and then hit W and click subdivide smooth. And we're going to do that three times. If you go back into object mode, you'll notice that the hand does look a little bit smoother. The reason why we're actually doing this is just to add a little bit of detail before we get to the sculpting, just so that it is actually a bit more higher polygon. Plus, uh, with the subdivide smooth, it follows the lines of the low polygon mesh. So you'll see much of the details already been added for us. We would just have to clean it up a bit. Okay, so let's go into sculpt mode. We still have my settings the same from before. So let's just enable dynamic topology and ignore that warning there. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to hold shift to and click to smooth out. Now, don't worry about the seams over here because we are going to fix that. Uh, well, not fix it, we're basically going to cover it when we're uh, going to bake the normal maps. We might put an armband here or a watch or just something to cover that seam. So let's just move out everything here. Okay, once everything is smooth, what I'm going to show you guys now is just one or two tips on how to create um, different hands. It already depends on what you want to do with the character. I essentially want to create character a character with uh, a glove on, um, but I will just show you also how to just sculpt the basics of the, the skin first. So let's say here at the bottom, you're gonna, you would have to use the crease brush and just increase its size a little bit. And then you just add in the details there. The best would be to look at your, your hand itself when you're busy putting in these details and then just see where the finger curves and bends. Then what we're going to do for the top here is I'm just going to do a clay strip. Just do it a couple of times on here. So it adds a little bit of details and then go back to the crease brush and then once again, using your own fingers or reference, you just start putting in details. And the reason why I use the clay strip is because uh, you want to get that little bit of a bump for the top part of your, your finger, finger um, just to give it a bit more of a, a fleshy look. That looks okay. Don't like the sides, so I'm just going to smooth them out. And once again, it all, as I said, it all really depends on what you want to do. So let's just get back into a proper view. Then for the nails, what you would do is also use the crease brush and then just kind of try and cut the details in. And there essentially you have a nail already. You might just have to add a bit of flesh to it so that the finger doesn't look all weird and funny. Just smooth it out. Or maybe use the, not the flatten, we'll use the I will go with the flatten brush. 
you do that because your nails are generally kind of smooth to give it a bit more of a, a look like a nail less of a detail you would need to add here at the bottom obviously we're not going to do anything like fingerprints that would just be I would say in my mind we be insane to try and sculpt these details that you would get from a photo texture that you'll put in um, so we're not going to cover anything like that so this will just be a repeat process with every finger until you get what you want and you would just like fill in a couple of details like uh, in between Ooh. zoomed in too much again in between the fingers here you could just add a crease and smooth it out. So this all depends on what you want to do and until you are happy with, with the model itself. A few more things that we can cover here is also like the details on the bottom or in the palm of your hand. Once again, just using your own hand as reference. You can just start by maybe cutting in some of the details. Let's go more, something more like that. And something like this. And just little random details. I want to zoom in, then you can add finer detail. It's going to push up the polygon count of your model because we're using dynamic topology. You just click smooth and then you can see the details already starting to come out. So those are just your basic tips on how to start sculpting a hand. Um, one last thing for the fleshy parts of a hand, if you want to add details like... Um, let's say you want to add some veins or some parts of the the finger up here you can just select the crease brush and then just hold control and when you do that it looks something like this it just is that maybe something along the lines of that and then just smooth it out there we go quick and easy veins now all these details will show up in your normal map so take that into account when you're busy sculpting okay so that's the basics for sculpting your hand so what i'm going to do now as i said i want to do a character that's wearing gloves now essentially um gloves aren't really going to be much uh, more difficult because what you actually will do with gloves is just skip the the finger part and everything and you could probably use the low polygon mesh that we had before to create gloves now but what i want to do is i want to create gloves that still have the fingers exposed in the front so the way i'm going to do that so i'm first just going to cut do it with the pinky here I'm going to cut some details in here. It might look a little bit weird, but we are going to flesh it out uh, right now by just using the inflate brush and then inflating this part of the finger. There we go. And then we're going to smooth it out quickly. And then just inflate the rest. And we're just going to go back into the crease brush, make it a little bit smaller. And then on the part that you think the glove would be, you would like add the details. So more from the side and there we 
we go. And once everything is smoothed out, as you can see, this part is a little bit bigger because we inflated it. The finger still looks the same size, so it will actually look um, like the person is wearing a glove. Oh, let's just put a fingernail here for reference. That way you can maybe get a, a sense of what it is a little bit better. Then also to give the glove maybe a little bit more uh, of a realistic feel, you can smooth that away and using your clay strips brush, let's maybe add a line like that. What I'm um, creating here now is a soft padding that uh, normally these gloves have in um, other um, for rock climbing or something. Normally some of these uh, gloves have padding on this side. Um, I guess it's just to prevent yourself from hurting your hand. I don't really know. Um, but all as, as I'm just demonstrating here so that you can add your own detail to your your hand here and what I'm going to do is to use the flatten brush to give it a bit more of a square and smoothed out look and there we go so if you can see that number one here we have a normal uh, well the start of a normal hand and what we have here is the start of a glove that runs in and then the tips of the fingers are exposed i think for my model i'm going to go with the glove and with the tips of the fingers exposed so i will be doing the rest of the fingers I don't think it's necessary to cover it in the video because I just showed you the basics on how to do it. So um, it's all up to you on what you want to do. Uh, I will show the end result in the next video because the next video what we'll be doing is we'll be covering the pants area over here. So that should be coming up very shortly. And then um, I hope you guys like what you saw. Please subscribe to my channel. I will see you all in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.